Welcome to another episode of Agent versus Lender. And we're doing something a little different today. We are going live and we are with Rob Aubrey, who is uh, the principal broker um, of Rob, what, what agency are Aubrey, you? Aubrey and Associates. Aubrey Realty. and Associates. <laughs> Aubrey and I Associates guess I should have known that. Yeah, right. Should have asked that question, right? Yeah, yeah. Should have asked that question. So I think he's been in the industry like 30 years, been a principal broker for the, the past eight years, but he's done really well. He uh, has 90 agents and uh, he calls himself a virtual office, so it, which, is, which is really interesting. It's a little bit out of the norm. But um, anyway, we, we want to talk to you guys today about um, how to leverage your time and grow your business. And that's always something that I'm really interested in because leveraging my time and getting other people to do things that that I'm not good at or that I don't walk, like to do um, has been key in, in helping me to grow. And I just couldn't do it without without leveraging um, those kind of things. So we're going to talk to Rob today. So welcome. Welcome to the show today, Rob. Well, thanks for having me. Um, you know, Ron and I it started out. We I did a post the other day on a, a Facebook group called Lab Code Agents. And boom, it kind of blew up a little bit. And the topic was how many people are using a showing agent. Of course, there were some uh, adamant anti-showing agents, you know. You know, of course, I didn't want to embarrass them and say, well, you're probably not doing a lot of business. So <laughs> I said, got me right though. But I left them alone, you know. I Sometimes, guys, I, I've matured in my years, Ron. So, <laughs> you know, there was a time where I would have just blasted them, you know. Yeah. So, but, um, you know, and I teach, you know, I, I used to be an agent, you know, I mean, I was an agent for many years before I became a principal. I've been licensed just under 30 years, but a principal, there'll be eight years this November. So I've been an agent and I was an agent, you know, functioning as a producing agent for about half my tenure as a principal, because when I first opened up, you know, it was only me and a couple of agents. So I had to actually sell houses. Sure. So, you know, I come, you know, so I know what it is to be an agent. I'm, I have my finger on that pulse and leverage is everything, right? So like I have a full-time administrative person. I have a payroll finance person. I mean, they handle the money. Uh, we have another virtual assistant that uh, works for us. And so, you know, so that, I mean, so I, I, I'm a big fan of leverage and hiring the right people. I, I was, I'm listening to the book, uh, Good to Great. And one of the quotes he said was, let me see if I can get it right. Um, people are not your greatest asset. The right people are the greatest asset. 100%. Isn't that great? 100%. Yeah, yes. isn't that a great thought? The right people, you know, you got to have the right people in the right seat on the bus, you know? So, and their focus was not so much on finding a person for a certain task, when you find talent, you know, and th this is obviously a bigger, you know, bigger way of thinking the book, good to great, you know, so, but let's just dial it down an agent, right? So if you're an agent, there's only four things you're supposed to do. And the acronym uh, is PLAN, P-L-A-N, right? So right. And that stands for prospecting, lead follow-up, appointments, and negotiating contracts. That's it. I heard an agent the other day, uh, well, last month, down at a Mike Ferry Superstar retreat, she says, prospecting, lead follow-up, appointments, and not my job. <laughs> you know, and not my job, man. That was awesome. So this all this all pertains to loan officers, too. Oh, so yeah. Exactly absolutely. the same thing. Yeah. I mean, you have to be doing income-generating activities. Prospecting, lead follow-up, appointments, and, you know, and I, and I don't know what your fourth one would be for an L.O., but it's the same thing. It, it is. It, it's still those first three things are exactly the same thing. So we may not be negotiating a trunk contract, but Correct. we are negotiating um, interest rates. We're, we're negotiating right. different types of loan programs. So it all kind of, it all kind of, kind of, yeah, all, all yeah. flows together. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of similarity. Um, oh crap! I should have done this a, a little bit ago, but uh, I had Costco coming. I, I, um, uh, God, I got to tell him to go to my garage door. <laughs> hey, I well, apologize. That's, 
that, no, that's I okay. So that. that's the thing about being live is like, right. Uh, this is all real stuff. And, uh, so, so for those of you that if, if we're going to release this as a podcast a little bit later. So for those of you that are just listening, Rob has somebody ha that's, that's there. That's that no, they're coming. They're on their way. <laughs> I try to take care of care yeah. some business there. Well, so, and, and the cool part about technology is, I mean, I mean, one thing that came out of the government shutdown was delivery services have dramatically improved, right? Oh, oh yeah, tons. So, but I can open up my garage door from my phone. You know. All right, cool. That. That's awesome. So, so we're talking about uh, where we're going to talk about leveraging time. Right. And and um, Rob was just saying that that he has uh, several people on his team and putting the right people on the team, and so. I've done the same thing. I have, I have a couple of loan assistants. I have um, a marketing, uh, you know, a marketing manager who that Rob and I can see in the background um, here uh, as we are, uh, as we're talking to each other. She's, she's, she's actually on this, this, uh, this call with us. Um, and then we have, um, we have uh, th at least three virtual assistants and we have a processor and we have, uh, have an operations manager. So I have some key pieces in place and there was no way. So I started with one person. I started with one, one loan as assistant. And then I realized, my gosh, I had this one loan assistant. All of a sudden I can do more because I have some, somebody taking those things off of my plate right. that quite honestly, I'm just not that good at. Right. And we're just not good at everything. And so we find those things that we're good at and that, and, or those things that more importantly, things that we aren't good at and that we don't like to do and find pieces to fill those, those, uh, or find people to fill those, those right. pieces of the puzzle for us. Well, then enjoy doing that. I mean, there's things that we don't right. enjoy. It's just our behavior style. And then there's people that are, which it's hard to fathom sometimes for guys like us, Ron. It's like, I mean, people really actually like that, you know, and it's like, yes. hey, I've had it. If you like it, then it's yours. You right. Know, so you're in charge, you know? Yeah. So there's, there's something called a disc profile and there's, there's yeah. other personality profile things, you know, the yeah. color code and there's, there's some things, but I disc profile everybody on my team, like everybody, because that gives me an idea as to how they work, what Where motivates them yeah. and what they're good at. So it, it, cause I don't want, I don't want everybody on my team. That's like me no. because then we're all trying to do the same thing and it just doesn't work very well. No, guys like you and I, we're like movers, shakers, dreamers. You know, we can we we don't think that anything could ever go wrong. And if we had a whole room full of us, we would be bankrupt in no time flat. Right. Exactly. So we would put out a hundred ideas that don't work. Right. You know, where you get other people that kind of balance you out. You know, like my CFO, he kind of you know brings always brings it back to reality. Yeah. So. Yeah, and that's that's my operations manager, Taylor. Taylor is sometimes. Um, he'll, he will talk about some ideas that I have and he'll, he'll kind of bring me back to reality and quite honestly, right. it kind of pisses me off sometime. Right. Right. And, you know, it's just like, I don't want to be dreaming, brought down it was reality. Awesome. Yeah. Right. It was awesome when I dreamt this idea, <laughs> I made millions, but, um, yeah, I remember reading a book years ago called the one minute millionaire. And it wasn't about making a million dollars in a minute, but it was the million dollar idea came to you in a minute. And mm -hmm. he used to ha he called a thing called the hots, and I forget what it was. It was like the hare, the owl, the tortoise, and uh, I forget the. Uh, but what he said was, you have these different people, and he says you have what they call a hots meeting, and you know, so you 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 want the you want you always want the guy that can see everything that could ever possibly go wrong. You want to bring you want to run your ideas through them. Because then what you do is you take everything and go wrong, go back and fix those or figure out how to prop them up so they don't fail. And then mm -hmm. boom, now you have a better shot of making your idea go further down the road. Right. But So how do, how do we bring, so a lot of the people that are either going to watch this or video this, or, or sorry, are, are going to listen to this, they may not be. Yeah, they're uh, not doing what we're doing. Yeah, they're not. And, and you know what? And and just because you're a good real estate agent or a good loan officer doesn't mean that you're going to be good at at building a business. It's mm -hmm. it's it may not be in your wheelhouse, which right. is OK. You know, you join you join Rob, you join me um, and, and we can we can put those pieces in place for you. But for the for most of the people out there, what is it that they need to do 
to move their business forward. Right. Well, the first thing you need to do is leverage, right? So back to the four items, prospecting, lead, follow up, going on appointments and negotiating contracts. So let's think about that. Prospecting, another word for, I mean, we use prospecting. Um, some people hate that word. They're allergic to it. They break out in highs, whatever, you know, but it works for the acronym, sure. right? Yeah. So, but you can change the word prospecting to appointment setting sessions. So whatever that is for you, and I like the phrase appointment setting session because it gets your focus on what you're doing. Sometimes you get yeah. contactitis when you're just dialing for dollars, you know? <clears throat> so, but I like the idea of appointment setting sessions. And then your second item is lead follow-up. You know, when you have leads, you have to be a tenacious lead follow-up. Generating leads, whether you're doing, uh, you know, uh, Google pay-per-click, uh, Facebook ads, or cold calling, SOI marketing, regardless of whatever it is, leads are actually easy. The money is in lead follow-up, okay? So Agreed. I want to lay the foundation of what you have to do first. Then we'll start talking about leverage because those four items alone, you know, are a lot, right? Then you have to go on appointments and appointments can be, uh, you know, uh, a listing appointment, you know, a, what I call a buyer listing appointment. That's where you meet with a buyer, get a buyer broker agreement signed and then or showing houses, right? And mm -hmm. then, then the fourth item is negotiate contracts. You know, that's between uh, you and, you know, the listing, uh, get that signed, uh, negotiate a contract between a buyer and a seller, negotiate repairs. Those are negotiating the contracts. Those are your job as an agent, right? Mm -hmm. Unless right. you li specifically have, you know, a large enough business where you have a negotiator on your team, that's all they do. And then that's a pretty big organization. But let's just stick to the kind of the solo agent that wants to grow or is very busy now and wants to get some of their time back. So, you know, so you have those four items. So the idea of a, the, one of the first, there's two main people that you need. One is a showing agent, okay? Not a buyer's agent, a showing agent, okay? So you as the agent, you meet with the buyer, you get a buyer broker agreement signed, then you work with your lender, Ron, and then you get their loan approved. And then you as the agent, so now you have a, you have a buyer that's, you know, signed an agency contract, got their loan approved, and then, then the showing agent steps in and shows houses. Now, these are typically part-time agents, uh, things like that. They're, you know, they're going to maybe make, say, 20%. You know, let's say you have a 2400 20 or, you know, $12,000 commission, 3% of 400 You know, they're going to get $2,400. Well, if they work six hours, you that's know, they make $400. Yeah, it's four hundred dollars an hour. Yeah, that's that's like killer. That's real money, you know. So, so you know what? We were on. I I came up with this topic. Well, you came up with this topic, right? Um, on on a, a a forum in in social media, and we had a lot of people that like that were not up to this. They they weren't. Yeah, they, they didn't have their mind open to this. They they were like shutting this down. Other right. people were like, oh, hundred percent. Right. So why do people, why do they have the mindset of not wanting that? Well, there's, I, I break it down to two ways of thinking, right? There's abundance and scarcity. And, you know, and then, you know, that's one way of thinking. The other way is um, Robert Kiyosaki said that in the cash flow quadrant, right? You mm -hmm. have E's, S, uh, B's and I, right? So E is an employee, you know, they're like, I want a steady paycheck. And S is self-employed. And a, a characteristic trait of a self-employed person is I can't find anybody to do it right. I'll do it myself. <laughs> right. And that's a real that's, estate. There's agent. some truth in that. That's a real estate agent. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, the other one is um, uh, what do you call it? Um, a, uh, a business person says. Entrepreneur. Right. They're saying, why do that when you can get somebody else to do it? Right. Yep. And then the I is uh, an investor. When do I get my money back? Yeah. So, so it really falls into that self-employed mindset. I can't find anybody to do it right. They're not really running a business. They're running a job. Now, real estate agent is a good job. It can be a great job. You make a lot of money. I mean, I've coached agents into making, you know, well over half a million dollars in a year. I mean, you know, they're running a job, but hey, that's a great job. Yeah. No matter how you slice it up. So a showing agent can really leverage your time
because listings are the key to everything in a real estate business, you know? And so you have to have a lender that'll help you, you know, get your buyers qualified and do loans well, but also work with you on listings because listings bring buyers. A hundred percent. You know what I mean? So, yeah. and listings are highly leverageable. You know, you can market them, you know, and I sent out an email the other week, you know, don't publish your listing, launch your listing, right? Have a strategy that says, you know, we got to have the photos done by this time. We're going to do an open house. So we have to get this ad out. We have to get our Facebook marketing ready and a postcard all ready, everything ready. And then boom, you launch the listing. And then, you know, the sign, the photos, everything done right. Because one of the things I teach is that when you're listing a property and marketing a property for sale, the greatest marketing you can do is take care of that listing so well that every other potential seller that's watching says, I want that. I want that marketing for my house. Yeah. That's the best, that's the best lead generation you could do. You're attracting business, right? You know, and then so, and we've got out of that behavior because, you know, in the current climate, I mean, we're, things just sell. So people are like, eh, you know, so they don't bother doing it. You know, and that all, all the way down to your sign, right? You want to have the nice quality signpost because that matters. <clears throat> you know, I mean, you don't want the little one, it's leaning. You know, you want a good quality sign. You want to make sure they're painted well if they're not plastic, you know, and things like that. You don't want beat up signs. You know, you want quality photos. You know, research has shown that quality photos generate more leads, you know, but and that's both buyer and seller. Right. So things like mm -hmm. you just want to do it all quality. You want to give everybody the Rich Carlton experience. <clears throat> you know, agreed. That's the key. So but so, back to the leverage. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was actually going to do is the leverage is um, you talked about a buyer's agent or no, you the didn't talk about a showing agent. Right. And so uh, so would you have a showing agent? or a transaction coordinator well both first um because they're both important yeah. i think yeah i mean the transaction coordinator regardless okay because that would be the second person i get a showing agent is when you have too many buyers and you're and you're too busy you're not busy enough to take on a buyer's agent you know because if you take on a buyer's agent you need to feed them they need to be busy they need to be closing two deals a month if yeah. not, then what are you doing? You have a responsibility to feed them business, enough business to where they're closing two deals a month. Where a showing agent's a part-time agent per se, you know, and they're kind of breaking in and they you can train them to show and they could grow into a buyer's agent. But the transaction coordinator, that absolutely. You know, one of the biggest things I always hear when I talk to agents is that um, you know, when I get busier, I'll get a transaction coordinator. I'm like, no, 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 no. You're backwards. When you get yeah. a transaction coordinator, you will actually become more busy because you're back to the four things again, right? You're back to doing the four items that generate business, prospecting, lead follow-up, appointments, and negotiating contracts. Those right. are the income generating activities. Everything else should be off your plate. Right. And and, and so that, that was the reason why I hired, my first hire was, was what I call a loan partner. It was somebody, somebody that could, could pre-qual, they could, they could take the applications, they can, they can, um, they can do all the backend stuff other than my processor, you right. know, I had a processor, but my, but then my, my loan partner was somebody that could do, do that stuff. And then I could go out and generate the leads and, right. And, and it doesn't mean that I'm not talking to my, my buyers. It doesn't mean that I'm not talking to them, but, yeah, but I'm not, I'm not putting hand putting in the, 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 the loan application. I'm not doing that kind of stuff. I'm offloading that to somebody else right. because I'll, I'll be honest with you. I can do that. I, I can take a, I can take a loan from beginning to, to end. end. I know how to do it all, I but to do I'm my not as good at it right. because uh, just like you said earlier, I'm not in that mindset. It's not something that I like to do. Right. And so I find somebody that love that back end work. And it's right. just like, man, I got another one. Oh, well, good. I get a structure deal. Oh, good. I get to process this, this one. Right. It's just like, to me, it's just like, oh my gosh, I got to process another one. It's right. Just like, and and I don't, I don't want to be that. Right. When you, when you have to do not saying you're right. I mean, there's nothing in the transaction that I'm not capable of doing. 
It's just a question right. of do I enjoy that? Uh, does it make me money? You know, <clears throat> so for me, it's like, no, you know, find somebody that enjoys that kind of work. I love it. They're going to do it better because I can do it. But what happens is it winds up taking me a long time, way too long. You know, a 15 minute job is now going to be an hour and a half where I could have been prospecting, you know, and I like making calls, you know, yeah, I make phone calls. I, um, you know, I look for agents that are, you know, that are um, closing between like six and 18 deals a year. Uh, been at least, you know, licensed a couple of years. So, you know, and that, you know, cause we're a virtual company, we're, we're only a transact, we're a small transaction fee based company. So that agent, you know, you know, they're, they're perfect for us, you know? So I, I spend my time looking for them. I spend my time in the prospecting because I have other people managing all the back offices. I have the payroll, you know, with 90 agents, we have a lot of money moving around. So I have a person oh, that's sure. their job. You know, that between earnest money commissions, you know, in and out, and we don't take checks. So everything's done by wire. I mean, it's all done, all done online. You know, then we have all the marketing stuff, all the back office stuff. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that goes on and I don't do any of it. Right, right. Which is important. So right. when you bring this back down to a level of loan officer or agent, right? Um, what they, what we need to understand is sometimes you have to let go of stuff. Oh, absolutely. You have to let go of stuff. And that's the hardest part right. of, of leveraging and scaling your business that most of us don't get is right. like, you have to let go. Um, like on a loan officer, you have to let go of, of whether it's an W2. Yeah. Yeah. And whether it's answering your phone, whether it's right. taking the loan applications, whether it's structuring the deal. And as an agent, it's like, it, do you let go of showings? Do you let go of, of, of uh, not the negotiating, exactly. the paperwork. but yeah. the paper, no, the it's the paperwork, is right? It's the paperwork. So well, you have just, to let go of it. And, and a lot of agents say, but they don't go it as do it as good as me. Yeah. And I was just going to clarify. I was just going to touch on that. So let, good, me, give you touch a, on let that. me give you a perfect example. Okay. So the Waldorf Astorio in New York, New York right? The Waldorf Astorio is yeah. arguably one of the, uh, the most quality service, high end, you know, on a scale of one to five stars, there are six, right? Mm -hmm. And and that's from everybody in the organization. And that's because of culture and training. So when you, let me give you a story. So we had a speaker one time. So he's from the Waldorf. And so he said, uh, um, the guy calls up and he goes, look, my son, we were there. He, he left his teddy bear there. And it's like, the dude doesn't leave his teddy bear anywhere. So they found it in the laundry. And so what they did is they took photos of the bear out by the pool. They put him in a chase lounge. They had him in a restaurant and they sent photos back and said, the bear decided to stay a few extra days. <laughs> and so they said that to the kid. So the kid sees this bear still on vacation. He's cool. Right. But think about how quality that was. Right. Yeah. I mean, it cost them nothing. A few pictures and email. And then they FedEx the guy's bear 20 bucks. Right. So, but the thing is, Here's the, here's the question I have. All that took place. That's a culture that they have in their organization. Yeah. But do you think the owner of the Waldorf Astoria was involved in that? No. No, no, he was not. Right, but exactly. Exactly. Do you think the Rich Carlton experience, do you think Mr. Rich and Carlton, if they're who they are, I don't know if that's the exact people, do you think they're the ones that are actually doing the day-to-day -day grind that's providing the utmost quality service? No, you can delegate quality service as long as you have those standards. You just right. have to train people and say, these are our expectations. So just, just to bring it back down to a, a, another level. An agent level. Yeah, um, I, I have, so my, my marketing manager, Sydney, she's, you, you can, well, you, the, those that are watching this can't see her, but Rob and I can see her. Yeah, um, see her she's, she's on, she, she's actually monitoring this call and making right. sure that, that things are going she's okay. Running the show, right? She's running, she's Ron running the show. show. She's, right, she's exactly <laughs> running the show. We're just the so, monkey talking heads, you know? Yeah. So, so the thing is, is, is she was editing and a podcast. So she was doing all the audio editing. She was doing the video editing. And when I found out how long it was taking her, how much of her day it was taking to do that, 
I just because because there was other projects that were that they were getting behind. I said, well, what does your day look like? And when she told me, right. I said, we have to solve that. Right. And so we found a virtual assistant that, so that has all, all the podcast, yeah. does all the audio, does right. all the video, and does all of our creative stuff. And she just manages that. Right. And so now she's freed up to do other stuff. Right. And so that that free that allows us to do other marketing activities because she's not she's not in the grind of editing all the audio and video. And it's the same thing for everybody. It's just like you agents have to get out of that paperwork. I'm telling you, they have to get out of the paperwork. If they want to make more money, if they want to make more money. Right. Yeah. And that's what, but you can do that very simply with, you know, a showing agent and a transaction coordinator. Now the beauty of that system that I'm laying out there is you don't have anybody on payroll they're paid per transaction. So right. if you're not busy for whatever reason, then you don't have to worry about meeting payroll. Like Ron has people that they're on payroll. You know, he has loan officers. So yeah, they get paid commissions, but there's other people that they get paid regardless. Right. So, you know, so that, and that's always daunting in the beginning. You know, when you do your first hire that's on payroll, you're always like, man, you know, but at six months after you're in, you're like, not only do you, you know, they can take all these things off your plate, but then you actually start to discover what well, we can do services that we weren't doing that actually raises our level of business that brings in more referrals. Right. Because you're given that rich Carlton experience. Yeah. There is no way that I could do the marketing. There's no way that I could do podcasts. There's no way right. that I could do lives. There's no way that I could do all the stuff video editing. without these people. I and mean, then, these and people then take a loan key. application. Right. 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 No, yeah, I get it. Same yeah. thing with an agent. I mean, you know, so here's as an agent, this is what you should do. You should be on the phones trying to set an appointment. The whole goal is to go on the appointment. Then you go on the appointment, you get a contract signed. Then you should just turn around and hand it to somebody. And that's it. If it's a listing, they're going to order the title. They're, they're going to order the photos. They're going to order the sign and then everything. They're going to publish it. They're going to, you know, proof it, you know, introduce themselves to the seller blah, blah, blah. It goes live. They, you know, you guys coordinate when it goes live, you know, boom, their hand on that, you know, and that's, you know, and then you can have other marketing pieces in place. You can hire a VA for that to do these types of things, you know, like in our office, you know, I mean, if you look back there, we have all kinds of printing equipment, you know, we print, you know, we do postcards and mailers and flyers. I mean, we, we fulfill that right here. So anyway, the agent doesn't have to do that. No, they can, no, the agent can order just listed cards, give us the uh, address, and we fulfill it. Yeah, it's done out the door. I mean, we just send them an invoice. I mean, we we pull the phone. I mean, the addresses, and then we even pull addresses. And we have two things: we can either just pull the mailing list, or we can go in and get those that have phone numbers and email addresses. And then that list becomes um, either a call list, or you can upload it into Facebook as a custom audience and do a just listed to people like through, through Facebook, to people that just live in the area versus doing all zip code. So for those that are listening to this, um, mark this 27 minutes into this podcast, huh. we just, Rob just gave you a huge golden nugget of how to scale your business. It's just like, and, and Rob does this, Rob does this for you. If you want to learn how to do this, Rob can Rob can help you grow your business and scale it because he's got all the pieces in place. If you're a loan officer, right. I've got all the pieces in place. We can both help you scale. Right. I mean, yeah, exactly. I mean, I have a machine back there. I have one printer that you know I can do fly, but it, that black piece that's a conveyor belt. I could put 500 envelopes on there and just crank them out. I mean, it does like 70 a minute. I got a machine over there. You can't see it, but um. It'll I can see pull. several of them back there. Yeah, but the one I'm pointing to, you can't see. It's um, well, I only see the half screen, so I don't know what you see. But, yeah, that's um, all I see too. Right, but it, it'll it'll actually fold the letter, stuff in the envelope, and seal it shut. Nice. So it's nine hundred an hour. Nice. You know, so we have all that. We have the software to pull address list. I mean, we, you know, in other words, because what we're doing is what we did is when I was an agent, it was hard to scale that because. You know, I couldn't just go out and buy 
you know, when I was a producing agent, uh, you know, a $30,000 printer, <clears throat> you know, I couldn't go out and buy a $5,000 machine that folds and stuffed envelopes, you know, right. like that one machine back there, a printing envelope. I mean, the printer is eight grand. Uh, the conveyor belt was four. I mean, that's 12 grand just for that one piece of equipment, <clears throat> you know, I mean, so, you know, my cutters are $1,500 a piece, you know, I mean, right. it, but as an agent, you can't buy that. But as a company, we could. You know, and I always, I had that vision from day one when I built the office. And so, so that's why it's important for um, agents, loan officers to partner with somebody that has these pieces in place that can help right. them scale, that has help. So like as a loan officer, I have loan, I have loan assistants, I have processors, I have marketing, I have people in place to help them scale. You, uh, as, as a real estate um, broker, you have those same pieces in place. You can help people. You have the marketing. You have you have transaction coordinators. You have people there right. to take the things off their plate so that yep. they can do what's most important, which is setting the appointments and making those phone calls and, yeah. and doing and getting the contracts in. And then we're the same way here. It's just right. like. We have a loan application that comes in. We hand that off to our loan partner so that we can go get another one. Right. That's it. Yep. Right. You catch the fish. Somebody else cleans it. Perfect. You know, yep. You know, that's the way to do it. You know, and then once you get that system down, you, you know, so you can do one or two things. You can either do more business in the same amount of time, or you can do the same business in less time. You know, yeah, you'd make less money, but if you want to free up time, you know, it's going to cost you some money, but, but if you're doing it, you know, or there's a balance in between there, you know, I want to make more money and I want to work a little less time too. So, so that's an important point. Uh, and, and I'm going to, I want to wrap this up pretty soon, but that's a really important point that you just brought in. It's not everybody is looking to make more money. Some right. people are just making or looking to, to get more time. Right. But I submit to you that you can have both. Yes. You can actually make more money yep. working less if you if you learn the 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 the, the steps of scaling your business right. and that's where you and I come in as we help people do exactly that we help you um, make more money working less so you free up your time right so you can go out and do some things with your family and um, right. w- without going on vacation and and working half the time you're there. Oh yeah. So yeah, real estate agents don't go on vacation. They just work from sandy places. <clears throat> you know. Right. You know? <laughs> right. Uh, so I went to I went to Hawaii with my wife um, probably about four or five years ago, and the whole the, most of the time I was there, I was on the either on my phone or on my computer. Yeah, exactly. And, and afterwards, she said, "Ron, I don't want to do that again." No. And that's that's when I just went. I have got to do something. And so over the last five years, um, you know, I, I started this a long time ago, but I really didn't put things in place until probably the last four or five years. And we have grown like leaps and bounds um, since then. So w- now we have all the pieces in place. Right. So I want to share something with you real quick. I won't take a lot of time, but I was down at the Mike Ferry Superstar Retreat. There was a girl there. She was 32 years old. And so he had every, every day he had one agent on stage with him. So she was 32. Last year, she closed 300 transactions. Wow. 200 was her own personal production. Her team did 100. So she's 32. She's finished work every day at three o'clock. Good for her. Three o'clock. So yeah. well, check this out. So she got her license in high school. She closed 69 transactions her senior year of high school. Wow. <laughs> is that amazing? That so is her, amazing. So her father was a broker. So she's telling the story. She was eight years old. Her dad, so what she would do is she would dial, and if they answered, she'd be like, wrong number, whatever, and she would hand her dad all the phone numbers of somebody answering the phone. So he's just dialing people that are home, you know, where she's dialing through. She was eight years old, dialing people, and then giving him the phone numbers of those who answered. That's how she started. So she was making calls at eight. That is funny. That's that's actually genius. Oh, man, it really is. (laughs) These people are answering their phone. Yeah. Well, well, Rob, it's been really good talking to you. I I appreciate you you taking the time. It's, it's always fun when, when I can talk to somebody that, that understands uh, these concepts and not only understands them that, that actively teaches them 
and 90 agents, uh, obviously you're, 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 um, actually you're, you walk the walk. You don't just talk the talk. So I right. appreciate that. Right. I have the leverage pieces in place and, and we'll be doing more, you know, we'll be hiring. We're going to, we're going to fill it up more with more virtual assistants. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. They're, that's they're, awesome. Virtual assistants are where it's at. So what's the, what's, how do people get hold of you? What's the best way for people to get hold of you? You can either email me, Rob, R O B at Aubrey. And it's spelled A-U-B-R-E-Y.net, Rob at Aubrey.net. Uh, or you can always call me 801-999-8209. Again, 999-8209. And I'm, I'm assuming they can text you as well if they wanted to. Of course, yeah. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm, I'm very tech savvy. So, uh, and there it is, right? If you're watching this, then it's uh, right there across the screen. There you go. And uh, if and, and as always, if you uh, uh, want to reach uh, out to, to me or anybody on my team, you can get hold of me at 801-628-7667. And um, uh, you know, it's it, again. Thanks for thanks for joining oh, us. This is great. On, on I appreciate it. You having me on. It was um, a timely topic. I've been pushing this hard with my agent. You know, look, you got you have to stop being everything to everybody. Right. Totally you know, agree. If you want to grow, you know, and I, and I qualify that only if you want to grow. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If you're, if you're good, you know, I, I know some loan officers who are good with doing two or three transaction and they, sure. they work out of their house and they're, they're good just doing that. Uh, you know, right. but, but that, but they just can't get past that because they right. just can't have a leverage. It's leverage. the same thing with a real estate agent. Yep. Yep. Okay. So cool. Thanks, Thanks for all the tips. Uh, appreciate it. And yeah, uh, we'll day. catch you next time on, on Agent versus Lender. Thanks, Thanks Rob.